This week, we're going to continue our series on playing time. We've covered why you might not be getting as much playing time as you want, uh, and we started to cover uh, a big part of what you can do in order to earn more playing time. Today, we're going to dive a little bit deeper and go into some more steps that you can be taking in order to earn more playing time this upcoming season. And so, let's jump in. Welcome back to Hard Smart Together. I'm Coach Dave. I'm here every week to help you on your mental game, sharing the mindset tools and habits that'll help you take your game to the next level, both on and off the court. So this week, we're gonna continue our series on playing time. Uh, you might've missed me last week, uh, and you know, it just goes to prove, you know, life happens, you continue on. Uh, I had some things come up last week and I wasn't unable to share this video. So this week, here we are, we're back again and we are continuing on that process of learning how you can get more playing time and me sharing these tips with you. So in the last few weeks, we've covered uh, the word time and how you can use it as an instant reminder of maybe why you aren't getting the playing time that you think you deserve, why you're not getting off the bench, and, and how to earn more playing time. Um, so what have we covered so far? Just as a reminder, uh, a couple of videos ago, and you can go back and watch this if you haven't already seen it, but we covered the letter T in time. And T stood for trust. It's the, it is the number one reason that maybe you're not getting on the court or you're not getting the playing time that you feel you deserve. Maybe you're not in the game at the critical times that you feel you deserve. It's trust in you by your coach. So your, your coach doesn't really trust you on the court at that time. Now we're not talking about breathers. You're playing the entire game and maybe you know, you're coming out for a breather. We're talking about you're not getting off the bench. You're just not getting a lot of playing time um, and you wanna earn more. You've got to understand the reason why, and you've got to earn trust and develop trust between you and your coach. So last week, or a couple of weeks ago, we dove into the I. What does the I represent in time? And the I represented invest, investing. And what we were talking about when we were talking about investing is investing in your own self-development as a player. That you know, being part of teams, there's not a lot of time typically for the development for you as a player. And so we covered a lot of different things that you could do as an individual player to invest in developing your game, your uh, both your physical game, your mental game, your skill sets, um, and that investing is a long-term approach. It's not looking for a quick fix. It's not looking for instant gratification. It's something that you do on a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a yearly basis, and you see the rewards of that investment down the road. So we've covered T, we've covered I, um, and today we're gonna dive into what the M represents. And the reason we're using this acronym, this you know time acronym, is so that you can think, whenever you're thinking, man, I'm just not getting the playing time I deserve, I want you to think of these representations. Well, coach doesn't trust me enough on the floor right now. What can I do? And then you dive into the elements of investment within yourself that we talked about, and you can dive into what we're talking about today with the M, and next week we'll, we'll cover the E. And this will give you a toolbox of things to work on in order to grow your playing time over time. So, um, and I also mentioned last week, and, and if you haven't already, uh, I highly recommend, I, as a free gift to you, I've made available eight skills. 
And these skills are intangible skills. There's things that you don't have to be super athletic or talented to do. These are things that you can do that, that aren't really physical skills, but more skills that you can bring forth on the court, off the court, to your team, and coaches really notice them. Okay, so I've made these available to you. I'll put a link. Um, if you don't see the link below, if you're listening on the podcast, you can simply go to www.hardsmarttogether.com forward slash intangibles. And I highly recommend if you're a player, even if you're a parent of a player, these are great to download. Uh, I've made them as a, a PDF kind of checklist, but it also gives you um, things that you can specifically work on and ways that you can implement each of these intangible skills. I've made it a PDF so you can actually resize it if you want to print it out, put it on a wall, make it poster size. Uh, you can do that uh, as a reminder to you to some intangibles, these champion intangibles that you can bring forth to your team. Um, so I highly recommend that is a way to start investing in yourself and your self-development. So today, we're going to cover the M. And this M is something I, that sometimes this, the, when people refer to what we're going to talk about with the M, they refer to it and it's, it's kind of vague. What does it really mean? And so let me, let me reveal what the M means and then we're going to get into three specific ways that you can use what we're talking about today. The M, the big reveal today, the M in time refers to mental toughness. Mental toughness. That, that term is thrown around a lot by coaches, by trainers, by players, by teachers, by, you know, by parents. You know, there's a lot of people that throw around that term mental toughness. Well, you've got to be mentally tough. But what does that mean? So today we're going to get very specific into three areas that you can apply mental toughness that will specifically affect that level of trust between you and your coach. It will make you stand out. It will get you noticed. And it will help you in the long-term goal of gaining more playing time. So what are those three areas? The first area that we're going to cover in mental toughness is you've got to come with an attitude every day that you can't make things tough enough for me. What does that mean? There's going to be times that your coach is going to have hard practices. You're going to feel like that practice may never end. Okay? The same drill over and over and over again. Maybe your coach that day, he or she is, is on you, is on the whole team. Maybe you guys are making mistakes. And so the next thing you know, you're lining up on the line and, and running liners. Um, you've got to have an attitude of, that's okay, bring it on. You can't make this tough enough for me. Maybe you're going you know, throughout the season and you're not getting the playing time that you think you want or that you think you deserve. You've got to have the attitude you can't make it tough enough on me. I'm still showing up every day. I'm still being the best player I can be. I'm still investing in myself. I'm still working on my game. I'm still being positive for my team. I'm still here. You can't make it tough enough on me. You're not gonna make me quit. And when I say quit, I don't mean actually quit the team. Just that day, oh, hanging your head and oh, it's just too hard today. You've got to have that attitude of you can't make it tough enough for me when you've had a hard day at school. It's been a long day. Maybe you studied all night for a big test. And today, not only did you have to go through that test, but you got slammed with, you know, extra homework that you didn't think you were going to have. And, and maybe, you know, you... You know, classes didn't go quite the way you wanted them. And you're tired and you get to... to practice and you know the last thing you really want to do is practice you just want to go home maybe have a snack and take a nap because it's just been such a day but you've got to kind of have that attitude of nope I'm bringing it today you can't make it tough enough for me 
So that kind of mental toughness, coaches notice it. They might notice, man, you know, they came to practice today and, and I can tell they're tired. I heard from their teachers how hard of a day they had, but man, they're still here. They're still working as hard as they can. You know, we brought up conditioning. Maybe, maybe it's conditioning just because at the beginning of the season, especially during tryouts and, and during, uh, you know, the beginning of the season, coaches are trying to get you in shape, you know, uh, maybe you're, your whole team, you know, needed some conditioning to get ready for the season uh, as a great equalizer in games, right? Um, when you're going through those conditioning drills over and over again, it's easy to go, oh man, another one? We gotta run again? Oh, we've gotta do more push-ups? Oh, we've gotta do more crunches? Oh, we've gotta do this more? When is it gonna end? Hang in your head? Maybe not, you know, hustling to come in first and compete in each conditioning drill. That's the time that you've got to have the mental toughness to stand out from the crowd and go, you know what? <laughs> this, you couldn't make this tough enough. You couldn't run me enough for me to mentally quit on this. I'm going to keep pushing myself and I'm going to compete in this drill. Bring it on. Bring another you know, liner, bring, bring 10 more push-ups, bring some more crunches, bring it on. And let me tell you, that type of mental toughness will stand out to your coaches. Just having that mental attitude, whenever you feel, oh, it's just too much, just have that attitude, switch that, that gear in your brain that goes, you know what? No, not me. I'm so mentally tough, you can't make it tough enough for me. And you'll stand out from those that maybe don't have that attitude. So that's the number one area that you can bring mental toughness. What's number two? This is a huge one when it comes to playing time. You've got to be mentally tough enough to control your support environment. What do I mean by that? You're surrounded by people that love you, and want to support you and want you to be happy and have a great experience in your athletic journey, okay? You've got to kind of control that environment. These might be your parents. These might be your friends. This might be other teammates, um, you know, trainers, outside AAU coaches, whoever that is. And what do I mean or those are? What do I mean by control that environment, control that narrative? Do not fall into the trap and you're the one that's in control of this. Be mentally tough enough to keep those conversations focused on a positive environment, a positive conversation, and focused on solutions, not problems. I can tell you, I know it's tough. You come home, you're not getting the playing time that you feel you deserve. You don't think the coaches may be noticing you. And it's real easy to have, this is a conversation that happens at dinner tables all across the world. Man, coach is just unfair. Coach plays favorites. Coach, coach is just not noticing me. They don't care that I'm putting in the extra effort. They don't see it. I just think it's unfair. Well, when you bring that up, the people that love you, that support you, your family, your brothers, your sisters, your, your parents, they're going to go down that road with you. Yeah, you're right. Coach is unfair. Maybe we should schedule a meeting with coach. Maybe we should talk to them. You, you, your coach doesn't know what he, he or she is talking about. They're the worst coach in the world. And it can quickly spiral in this nightly dinner or this morning breakfast that is constantly, you know, complaining about your situation, complaining about your lack of playing time, complaining about how unfair your coach is. This can happen with your teammates as well. Maybe there's two or three of you that aren't getting the playing time that you're not getting off the bench. Very quickly, that discussion can take place of, oh yeah, coach is playing favorites with these players. Oh, they just love, love that player. Oh, there's nothing we can do to get off the bench. 
These conversations that you're having, if you don't have the mental toughness to stop it in its tracks and, and you bring up the positivity, you know, I really want more playing time, but coach doesn't trust me enough yet. Yet, that's a big you know term. I, I'm not getting the playing time I want yet, but I will because I'm investing in myself. I'm doing these things to stand out to the coach. I'm also having an unbelievable experience. I think back to all those you know kids that tried out. There were 10 players that got cut Never even got an opportunity to be part of this team. I'm part of the team. I'm contributing. I'm going to really concentrate on being a great practice player. You have to control those conversations. Because they'll then, if you're focusing on the things you can do to solve the playing time issue or to appreciate what you have, those, those people that love and support you will love and support you down that road as well. How can I help? Can I help you in that self-development? You know, what can we do? I mean, you may come across some, some supporters, some supporters that are not as positive and maybe they bring up negativity. You have to have the mental toughness to change that narrative, to change that conversation. If there's a few players on the end of the bench that are, you know, going down the, the negative road, you need to step away from those players. You need to either try and change their narrative to being more positive, like you're trying to be, or you need to just step away and not participate in that because you cannot fall into that trap of negativity. And that is going to be something that you're gonna find throughout athletics. There's gonna be things that go wrong. Whether it's the team, maybe you're on a losing streak as the team, and the whole team starts this, you, can't, you cannot concentrate on the negativity of the results. You need to focus on what can be done to change those results, what can be done to improve on those results, what you can do to really embrace what you have as an athlete and being part of a team. So that's the second one. That's a huge one because let me tell you, as a past, as a coach at a lot of different levels. Although coaches do not punish players or families based on, you know, these kind of things, I'll tell you, it's a crime for coaches to go through these meetings and to have to explain maybe, you know, a different meeting. A different meeting is, hey, I really want to earn more playing time, what can I do to earn your trust? What can I do to earn more playing time? That's very different from, you know, I'm complaining because I'm not getting the playing time, you're playing favorites, you, you don't like our child, um, you know, all those types of complaints. You have to have the mental toughness to steer away from those things because coaches, um, they won't play favorites, but let me tell you, <laughs> You, you won't endear yourself to a coach by having your parents constantly calling meetings and slamming the coach's abilities or slamming your lack of playing time or trying to have the coach fired. Those are not things that are going to get you on the court. But not only that, you're just not gonna have a great experience. If you didn't play a minute all year, you can still have a great experience, okay? Or you can go down the negative route and play a lot. And if it's a negative experience, if it's horrible, if these discussions at the dinner table are horrible, these discussions with your teammates are horrible, the discussions with the coaches are horrible, you're going to have a negative experience. So really embrace the season and, and have the mental toughness to control the narrative. Focus on solutions. Don't focus on the problems and have the mental toughness to control the narrative of your support environment. That's your responsibility as a player. The third, and we've covered this a little bit in you know, the investment piece, but this is really important as well. What is the third way that you can utilize your mental toughness and practice your mental toughness? You have to embrace the grind. And what do I mean by embrace the grind? 
we've talked about the rewards for some of the inputs that you're putting in your self-development, both in, on the court, off the court, all the things that you're doing to earn playing time, but also to develop as a player, the rewards aren't instant. And sometimes it can become a bit of a grind. Well, you have to embrace that gr grind and you have to go, I am so mentally tough that I'm gonna give my best to this drill, to this practice, to this off-season workout. I don't feel like doing it right now. I'm just gonna do it. And let me tell you something. Some of the best results that you'll get when you don't feel like doing it. I'll use me as an example. I don't always feel like doing a video for YouTube. I Most of the time I do. I'm motivated. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to share this with the world. And if I just touch one player out there and they get some great value out of this, I have done my job for the day. But there are days where I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like setting up the camera. I don't feel like making my notes. I don't feel like getting up and talking. And some days I just have to embrace that and get behind the camera and talk to you, even though there's really no feedback here. By the way, I'd love feedback. If you guys are out there on YouTube, give me some feedback, put some notes down below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you how this is going for you. But a lot of times it's just me and the camera, right? And, uh, I have to embrace that grind because I have a long-term goal to really help the mental game of every athlete I can touch, to help the mindset of every student athlete I can touch. And so some days when I don't feel like it, I just get up, I do it. And sometimes afterwards I'm like, man, that was the best video I've ever shot. Well, the same thing can happen with you when you don't feel like going through that workout, when you don't feel like taking those extra free throws, taking a hundred extra free throws at the end of a practice, when you don't feel like maybe going and doing some more conditioning, when you don't feel like it is some of the best times to go do it. Because I can guarantee you this, when you get through it and you give it your best, you're going to go, man, that was awesome. I'm so glad I did that. Rarely, if ever, do you ever get to a point where you go, man, I wish I hadn't done that extra workout. I wish I hadn't have gotten up that extra 200 shots. I wish I hadn't have, you know, had that uh, mindset, um, you know, talk with, with my coach. I, I wish I hadn't have done that film work and, and watch film for another half an hour. Rarely do you ever feel that. You always feel a sense of, Man, I'm glad I had the mental toughness to push myself through that. And I'm that much better. I'm that much better today. I'm that much closer to my goal. More playing time. Successful season. Great season. Memories to look back on. Whatever the case might be. So those are three distinct ways that you can use mental toughness. I wanted to get specific today because I think people throw around mental toughness in a very vague fashion and it doesn't really have a great, um, you know, it's like, what do I do with that, right? So here's three distinct ways that you can use mental toughness. And just to remind you, the three ways are, you can't make this tough enough for me. I'm gonna be mentally tough enough to get through whatever you throw at me, bring on more. I'm ready for it. Having that type of mindset is really valuable and stands out to coaches. Being a positive, you know, having the mental toughness to control your support systems narrative and be positive all the time, that will stand out to coaches because they'll see the positivity both from you, your family, your teammates. You can control the narrative of your entire team. Having that mental toughness. And finally, the mental toughness to focus on the process of getting better as an individual player, of getting better as a team, the process of having a great season, to have an enjoyable season, something that you can all look back upon, no matter what the results are in wins and losses, but really embracing the grind 
and embracing that process is a third way that you can use mental toughness and really work on these three things. Catch yourself. When you find yourself going down one of those negative conversations, catch yourself saying, nope, I'm gonna be mentally tougher than that. I'm gonna change this conversation. When you find yourself going, oh, it's been too long of a day, I can't take this practice. You gotta change that. Nope, I'm, I'm too mentally tough for that. I'm gonna have a great practice, regardless that my day's been long and tiring. You know, when you find it's a long season, and you're kind of grinding your way through, I'm gonna embrace this. I'm gonna do that extra workout. I'm gonna do that extra thing that's gonna make me, you know, better and take my game to the next level, both on and off the court. So three ways that you can use mental toughness. I hope this was helpful today. Um, you know, leave a comment below, like I was saying, would love your feedback. Also would love not only your feedback on what I'm talking about, but you know, what do you, what types of things, what's, what are you struggling with in the world of mental toughness? What are some of your challenges when it comes to mental toughness and how can I help and maybe do a video down the line where I can help you out specifically with your issues with mental toughness. So until then, till next week, and we're gonna wrap this, this playing time episode up with the E, and this is really, the E is a game changer, let me tell you, it is a, a um, process that you can use, it is a, a habit that you can have that is going to really change things for you as you work through your season, as you work through your practices, so, be sure and show up next week for the E. And until then, remember to play hard, play smart, and most importantly, play together. Thanks, see you next week.